Absolutely. It all started with my grandmother. Her name was Sarah Weil. She was a survivor of Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. And she would tell me and my brothers the stories of her experience. Uh, and at such a young age, I was like five, six years old when I first started to hear these stories, they felt like the stuff of comic books, superheroes. It was the only way that I could actually understand the horrors that she went through. And, and I would say, you know, getting older, I struggled with that notion of birthright and legacy, responsibility. How would I continue her story? Uh, and Hunters became the answer. It really became this sort of love letter to my grandmother, this desire to be this Jewish superhero and depict Jewish superheroes, black superheroes, a Japanese American superhero, a, a band of others who we rarely see reclaim power. Um, and it also became this desire to shed light on hidden crimes and, and hidden truths. They are all driven, I think, by a feeling of otherness, a feeling of violence being perpetrated against them. Uh, they all have dealt with white supremacy in some way. And so this ragtag group kind of bands together to reclaim justice and vengeance and, uh, and just become superheroes in their own right. Oh my God, what a great, uh, what a great question. You know, I, I think this is certainly an allegorical tale, right? It's set in 1977, but I think it has echoes and reverberations of 2020 America. Uh, and only, you know, our heroes are only as great as their villains are, are strong. Um, but I think you'll see sort of details and touchstones about them, things that they say, clothing that they may wear, um, that have echoes to uh, 2020 America. Yeah, when I first read the script, I kind of thought, what is this? I've never read anything like this. I don't know how they're going to make this happen. But for me, I'm always looking for projects that are speaking to things that are going on right now, something that has a message that can start a conversation. And that's exactly what this is. And it, it, it's doing it in a way that no one's ever seen before. So I was like, OK, sign me up. <laughs> OK, um, I play Roxy Jones. She's the fixer in the group of hunters. She's a lock picker. She's a crime scene cleaner. She can fight. She knows how to shoot a gun. She can do it all, pretty much. She's a badass. Um, three words, strong, um, vulnerable, and uh, I'll use it again, badass. Yeah. <laughs> well, one, I love the fashion so much of that time. Like, it's my favorite decade for fashion. So it was like all of us just getting together and looking amazing. <laughs> the music is great. Um, just transporting back to a time that, you know, had Studio 54 and everyone was free, you know. It's, it's very different than today. <laughs> and um, I think it's a great time to be making a, a show set then, yeah. David Weil is the creator and, and the EP. He's a guy I'd known for a while, I've known for a while and, and, and did know for several years. And when I got this passion project from him, I didn't know what to think at first. And as I started reading the, the pages, I fell in love with it. This is a show that um, I, I, I wish, I, I just wanted to watch more than anything else. I wanted to skip the process of making it and just watch it. And so now we're here. And so that's why tonight's a, a celebration. Well, I think that there's a catharsis that comes with this show, okay? I mean, there was this moment when, you know, Get Out was about to come out. It felt like there was something happening in the ether. It felt like there was a certain um, illumination coming to this, this issue of racism. I think this, this idea of Nazis in America embedded in, in our system is one that um, is very, it's very close to home right now. And so I feel like there's, I, when, when, when David pitched me this show, when I read this show, I, I, I felt a similar moment as the moment that when, when Get Out hit. Well, we had a place my daughter in, in this series and for me it was instantly relevant because my parents are survivors and I grew up with these stories and Hannah has personal connection to it as well. Yes, uh, my, my best friend in middle school, uh, as we were learning about the Holocaust and about uh, World War II, it turns out her great-grandfather was an SS officer. So we were kind of finding out about that together, holding hands. And that was, and to see the intersection now of survivors and perpetrators, but put into this like fun universe was just immediately just like grabbed your whole attention. It's, it uses a lot of, it has a lot of tools in its box to tell the story. A lot of different techniques. It's surprising. I mean, just when you think you've understood it and you know what it is, it'll surprise you. It isn't a simple story about revenge on bad people. It's about 
um, the consequences of carrying out violent revenge. And these people, these hunters, are not people who are not Mission Impossible. They are ordinary people, and each of them has their own reasons for doing it and for staying in it or not wanting to stay in it. So I think the audience is going to connect to the bonds of these hunters and what they have to go through in order to keep at it. It's a, it is a, and also, it's surprisingly funny. When I first read the script, I went, how could they possibly want me for this? This is too, too amazing. I mean, I play Sister Harriet, who is a, a nun, an ex-MI6 spy nun who wants to kill a lot of Nazis. And she has reasons as well, but, you know, besides the obvious. So reading that and realizing what a fabulous, fabulous character she was, I just wanted to get into that habit straight away. Uh, I think it because it's a bit of everything. It's it's kind of genreless. It's kind of created its own genre in a way. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of laughs in there, obviously. But of course, it's it's, a, it's about a really heartbreaking moment in history that that tends to repeat itself over and over and over. So we're yeah, but that's what they'll get out of it. They'll get a really wild ride and, and a fun time. Yeah. Uh, it's not quite like anything I've ever read, yeah. And so I knew I wanted to be a part of it right away. Uh, I played Joe Mizushima, he's a Vietnam vet, and in three words I'd say he is damaged, hurt, and also a child. I mean, come on, look, like glamorous. Uh, are you kidding me? No, the nicest showrunners I've ever worked with, they're the best collaborative creative and yet great leaders um, they they instilled a great kind of family on set family environment and we all like kind of get along because of it and I'm I'm really really proud of the work they've done there was uh, numerous conversations about different ways to t tackle sort of the ambition of the show is that we exist in different time periods. There's um, a number of different tones that we had to, um, to sort of uh, conquer. Um, so I think that uh, we had numerous conversations with um, Alfonso gomez Rion, who directed our pilot, and, and Fred Elms, who was our wonderful cinematographer, and our production designer, um, Kurt Beach, to develop a color language, a visual style, so that when we were in different time periods, we were able to distinguish it and yet still make it feel a part of a piece. You know, I think that one of the things that um, attracted me to this project was that I thought it was so bold and so original and so different, and we hadn't seen anything like this. I mean, there's few things that you read or that you read that truly take your breath away, and I feel like everybody that has been involved um, with this project, from Jordan Peele to Al Pacino to David Weil to myself to the cast and crew, um, have had like a childlike enthusiasm about being a part of, of of this project. You know, I think it's an incredibly poignant show. I think that it's a show that celebrates what it means to be other, what it means to be Jewish, and it and it's a show that says that anybody can, anybody in this world, no matter what you look like or where you come from, can don a vigilante cape um, and and take back power. Oh, I was just uh, blown away with um, the writing. I thought it was really exciting. I um, thought there was a character there for me that I could potentially, uh, you know, try to do justice, try to figure out, fully realize with this team. Uh, but it was just a really good script, and I just wanted to know more. I just wanted to see the other episodes. Oh, David and Nikki are just brilliant. They're a great team and uh, great collaborators, really open-minded and uh, hardworking, dedicated. Also, just bold and ambitious. They wanted, when I first met with them and talked to them about the show, they just had really ambitious ideas to incorporate a lot of different, you know, tones and things into this series about hunting Nazis. And I thought that was really cool. I was like, to throw a dance sequence into a show about hunting Nazis in 1977 is a really bold thing to do. And uh, those, those are the people you want to be working with. Those are people you want to be collaborating with. So. Oh, there's so much cool stuff about making a show that takes place in the 70s in New York. Um, you know, to have the backing that Amazon gave to this show allowed the production designers and the wardrobe and the hair designers and makeup, everybody in every department to, uh, you know, flourish and, and really recreate this world in a special way. 
My reaction was it was good. I felt it. I felt that this was an unusual writer writing about something that he felt that he thought was personal and felt that way. And I love writing that's personal. So uh, I got to see him again, and then he told me more about it. Because when it's a series, there's a lot of episodes in it. So I just read the first episode. And then he told me about where it was going and stuff. So it's complicated. It's a complex character. I'm, I'm happy to say in a way because it gives you more to act and work with. So I, I don't know. It's, uh, he is a bit of a mystery. And uh, part of what he is also is something you find out in the course of of the uh, of the series, more and more, they stand for uh, survival, and they s stand for a kind of retribution and a kind of uh, hope. Well, I've never seen a Nazi hunting show set in the 1970s. First of all, so the plot is kind of uh, outrageous and fun and weird and sad and scary and thrilling and I mean it's just it's just a lot of things you know it, it moves all over the world it moves back and forth through time um, and it's just a, it's it's really fun but it's really about something all at the same time uh, his name is Lonnie Flash his original name is Leonard Flagenstein and he's a, uh, a movie star a really talented guy who's um, you know battled addiction and he's kind of fallen into a lifestyle and trying to, uh, you know, his movie career, let's say, has gone off the rails and he's uh, was invited to kill some Nazis and he thought, well, maybe this is a path towards redemption. So uh, three words, I don't know, um, bold, brash, and vulnerable. I don't know. We'll see. You'll have to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my first reaction was, well, this is a, an evil character and uh, far beyond anything I've ever done before. Um, but that was what interested me about it. It's, um, I'm always playing very nice English boys, uh, so I wanted something to push me. And I can't get much further away from who I am as a person than a neo-Nazi psychopath hitman. So he's one of these characters that is just almost at home in any situation. and. Yes, his motivation really comes from wanting to exert his own power and control over the world around him. And the neo-Nazis sort of allow him to do that. He's allowed to be the most psychopathic version of himself that he can be. So, yeah, that's why he's, that's why he's doing what he's doing. Sure, so there's like three camps in the, uh, in the show. There's the, the, the Nazis, the Hunters and the FBI. And the Nazis, uh, so there's me, there's Lane Olin, there's Dylan Baker. Uh, we're like the head of the Nazis and um, we throughout the show we're obviously trying to bring about the Fourth Reich in America in the 70s and I've got to say I, they're both the most lovely people you'll ever meet. Lena is fantastic, Dylan's fantastic, it was an inspiration working with those guys. I got a beautiful letter from David, David Weil and he's told me the story and why it was important to him and after reading it I realized how personal it was to me too. Um, it's, um, it's so much about outsiders trying to find their place in the world and uh, I really identify with Jonah's character and um, it was an important story and a message to get out in the world right now and I, um, you know, there's, it's also in, 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 in the horrific side of the story and it's so much about immigrants not being even considered humans and it's really spoke to me on a lot of levels and also stylistically how can you achieve this it's a challenging piece for a filmmaker balancing the humor and, and the horror and the comedy in, 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 in a way that the emotions felt, felt real so it was a challenge and it was a personal one too it was a process. I mean, I saw, I looked at just a lot of still photography as, as, as inspiration, and then I collaborated with Fred Elms, the cinematographer who was behind Blue Velvet and Eraserhead and Ice Storm, a lot of the Jarmusch movies, movies that really inspired me. And together we worked uh, on, on creating a palette, and every color had a meaning. All those colors were rules that all the departments kind of adhered to, from costumes to production design to lighting. And a red, red meant something, green meant something, secrecy or innocence. And then you can see it all in wallpaper, tie patterns. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of work that went into it that we all did together. Uh, I play Biff Simpson, 
and he is a sweet member of the Carter administration in the 70s and has some secrets. <laughs> Uh, you know, and Amazon is, is used to throwing out some incredible television, and I, I kind of feel like Hunter's is going to fit right in. Well, uh, it's the 70s, and uh, Al is a survivor, and he has gotten together a group of people to round up all of those Nazis that have found their way in the United States. I, I, it took me six months to grow terrible sideburns. But uh, I, uh, I, I, everything about the show, it was, you know, there was a certain looseness to it. Uh, you know, the writing uh, just was fantastic. Brought you right into the time, brought you right into the seriousness of it, but it's also funny. And, you know, so that's, that's a good combination. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Together, guys, straight ahead. Jordan, out. You did it? Okay, everybody, this camera right here. Right here. And everybody, right here for the lady. Got you. And everybody looking over here to the right by the TV cameras. Thank you. Jennifer Al, down the center. How about here? There we go. Both of you straight ahead, right in front. Well, y'all look on the right. I get it. Okay. Well, Let's see, let's see. I had a great one. Uh, one second. Well, I'm